Welcome in to another edition of Conversations with Paul Brown. Today we are on the south end of Anderson. We are at Sam's Curb Market that has been around for literally four generations. Marty's son now works here and uh, his grandfather started it. My grandfather, he actually borrowed some money from his father to finance and get the Sam's Curb Market up and started. What was he doing before he borrowed the money? Uh, he said he had done just different things, uh, insurance salesman, uh, other things like that, just odd jobs. He said that he always knew that he wanted to open up a store and run a business. Did he really? He did. This is actually the third building, but on the same street. Just got bigger every time? Just A little bit. Um, he was across the street, then he was at uh, where Soapy's Car Wash is now, and then uh, I do believe he said that he swapped lands with the person and uh, built this building. He ran it for a long time. He did. And then your dad got involved. How did that come about? Uh, well, my grandfather decided it was time for him to retire, and he uh, felt led to uh, preach. And then your involvement came about how? When I was about 11, I would work um, on the weekends and when I was out of school. And uh, just doing small wash the windows type jobs at that time. <laughs> and now you've got a son involved. Tell me about what he does. Uh, now he's uh, in the 11th grade at Pendleton High School and he um, he works on the weekends and during the holidays as well. <laughs> How proud of you are the fact that we've got four generations involved in Sam's Curb Market and you're the only one that has produce like you do with especially the fish. Yes sir. T talk about the significance of that to the Anderson community. Um, yeah we are currently other than the grocery stores that have the few items we're the only fresh seafood market. We get uh, about three loads of seafood a week. We get a whole fish that we actually clean and prepare. Mostly East Coast fish, North Carolina, Florida, Virginia. On the whole fish side we've got the whole catfish, uh, whole mullets, uh, croaker, uh, porgy spots, black bass, uh, we get whiting fillets, trout fillets, uh, ocean perch fillets, tilapia, fresh salmon, uh, we get shrimp, scallops, and oysters, all kind of different things. We got other stuff frozen too. The customers that come in here, when they walk in, a lot of times, do you know ahead of time what they're going to get? I do. A lot of people that we have come in are regulars. Uh, we kind of know a lot of the people very well friendly with everybody uh, and a lot of times we know what they're looking for. <laughs> Which ones sell more than anything else from the fish? On fish, it's uh, it depends on the week really. Uh, we sell a lot of the mullet, we sell a lot of uh, catfish, the whole ones, a little bit of everything. And uh, usually by the end of the week all that we've gotten during the week is pretty much gone. The other thing on the menu that <laughs> that you like to sell bologna. Tell yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, we get the old-fashioned stick bologna. We slice it by hand uh, with a knife, and uh, and we slice it thicker, thin. And I think a lot of people like that it's not paper thin, and that you can you can actually fry it. <laughs> Put it on a piece of bread and taste it. And it makes a pretty good sandwich. Oh yeah, it does. And there are other things unique here that that you sell besides that. You've, you've got cheese. What yeah, we've got a sharp cheddar that's really good. We slice it off however you want it sliced or, or in a pound chunks. Uh, got souse meat, liver cheese, that sort of thing that you don't see everywhere, I guess. Now, what do you do with those? How do you prepare those? Most of those are already prepared. You just put it on a piece of cracker or a loaf of bread or something like that. Our guest is Marty Chastain. We are at Sam's Curb Market down on Anderson South Side. Welcome back. We are down at Sam's Curb Market on Anderson South Side, and now we have the lovely Teresa Chastain, <laughs> um, who's a vital link in making this whole operation successful. Tell me how you fit into the big picture. Well, I was married to the second Sam. Sam and uh, my husband started working down here when he was 13. 
um, when I married him, we, I just started coming down at closing with Grandpa because it was at 11 o'clock at night. And I would sit back in the office with Grandpa playing checkers. Then I just started gradually working and Sammy would sit back in the office with Grandpa and that's how I started. You have an interesting story about how you met Sam and ended up getting married. Tell me that story. Well, I was very young. <laughs> um, my dad and mom got a divorce. And you were living at the time where? In Columbus, Georgia. And my dad started driving for Dow Battache. And I started coming up here visiting him on holidays. And Sammy lived right across the street. And we dated for over a year. Do you remember the first time you saw Sammy? <laughs> yes, I do. Were there sparks on both sides of the street? He was 17. I was 16. And uh, some friends, we went over to their house. And we started shooting fireworks at the park. And after that, he started calling and we started dating. And then at some point, you had to move up here when, after you got married. The day I got married, we moved up, I moved up here. <laughs> the wedding was in Columbus, Georgia. Your first visits to Anderson, coming up to visit your dad, what did you think about our community as an outsider then? Well, my first impression was everybody was so sweet. They were considerate. Here is, is just different. It's like family. And especially working here 43 years, I've come to know a lot of people and this is my family. Only one time worked somewhere else and it was for only six months. We got along better when we worked together. Um, and like I said, 43 years. And during that time you had how many kids? Two. And both of them would come up here as youngsters and hang out at the store? Yes, sir. When Marty was little, he would, and like if I worked in the morning and my husband worked in the evening, we would switch off kids. <laughs> so babysitters. But uh, my daughter, when she would come in, she would grab a tomato thinking it was an apple and she would just eat a tomato. And she would go back in the produce room and get peanuts and shove them in her pocket. And then when she would take a nap, she would eat her peanuts in her bed. <laughs> and then the time came when you lost Sam. During that process, was there talk about what would happen to Sam's Curve Market with you? He had about two years prior, maybe three, was not able to work. So he put the store in my name and um, told us how to do everything. And then you end up taking over, so to speak, You've got Marty helping you. Now you've got a grandson who's coming <laughs> in and adding his two cents worth. It's, it always has been a family operation, hasn't it? Yes, sir. And how special is that? It's our life. It's um, pays the bills. But more than that, our customers are our family. I know a lot about them, and they know a lot about me is very special. I asked Marty when customers come in, he kind of knows ahead of time what some of them want. I guess you do too. Yes, sir. <laughs> they sure do like your bologna. Yes, sir. Tell me about that. <laughs> Slices you were cutting are pretty thick. Yes, sir. Why is it better to have a thick piece of bologna than a thin piece of bologna? It's just their preference. Um, I have done a bologna omelet, and that is really good. 
I have made suggestions about that to other people. And there's one lady that I towed and she came back and she said she loves it. When you put cheese and onions and bologna, it's good. <laughs> the fact that you're the only fish market of its kind in Anderson County, mm -hmm. to me that would kind of be something special. You have bragging rights. I mean, I know these other stores have fish, but they don't have fish like you got fish. We do have crab legs. Our crab legs are pricey, but it the quality is a whole lot better. It's when you break a crab leg, it's got a whole hunk of meat in it. The shrimp is really good. Catfish, the whole catfish, you don't see that anywhere else. We do have to gut it, scale it, but to me it's a whole lot better than the grocery stores. Tell me about your produce. My son brings all the produce back. He comes, goes to Columbia and brings it back. Um, that's year round. We do have a truck that's parked in the parking lot. That's what he brings the produce back in. We do have turnip greens, cabbage, sweet potatoes, uh, apples, oranges. Peanuts. You have a special ginger ale that you're the courier for your ginger <laughs> ale. Tell me that. Well, we, they used to sell it in Belton. It was Belton Bottling Company. It was Buffalo Rock Ginger Ale, and it was in a bottle. They closed down, and they sell it in, um, they make it in Birmingham, Alabama. And when I go to my mama's, I load up, put it in my car, drive back, but uh, a lot of people use it for medicinal purposes. It does help settle their stomach. It is real spicy. It's not a gulper, it's a silver. And what I like about it is on the back of the can, it tells a little bit of history about it. That it, they started producing it in 1901. Uh, back in the Civil War days, they used it those ingredients, because it does have real ginger in it, for medicinal purposes. It does burn, but it is real good. And you can only get it at? Sam's Curb Market. <laughs> A lot of people may not even know you're here, but you've been here since when? when is this store was built in 1974. And this was the third one? Yes, sir, and I married in 75. So I have actually been in this building 43 years. Okay, well thank you for sharing your story and uh, continued success with your bologna and your <laughs> ginger ale. You need to try it. <laughs> and I thank the Chastains for sharing their story with us and we want to thank each of you for tuning in and invite you to be back with us next week, same time, for our next edition of Conversations with Paul Brown. Until then, take care everybody.